Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. I am Abe with MysticGenMara.com, a small town mystic from the middle of Idaho. And tonight, today, whenever you see this, I am offering a book review. So this one I picked up actually quite a few years ago. And I will say it's a really interesting book when it comes to what it talks about. Because it's called Visceral Magic, Bridging the Gap Between the mundane and the magical. So, here we go. <laughs> and it is by Peter Patton. And there's a, an image on the front that gives you a clue to what we're talking about here. So this book actually helps you in the Eastern, some of the Eastern traditions. They talk about the three primary sources of energy in the body. And they label them as Dantians. In his version, he calls them the three cauldrons. And it's actually an interesting concept um, this book is written from the perspective of a um, Wiccan druid crossover type energy uh, concept he is uh, Peter Patton is the an author and which has the fortune to encounter the techniques and practices in several forms and here he documents his own journey and the results as well as laying out exercises and practical applications to enable the reader to stop just visualizing and bl just plain see. Magic is a real force, one that will raise the hairs on the back of your neck and become a living, breathing part of your everyday life. This book shows you how to get there. So, it's from the back. <laughs> uh, with that, you'll go through, and he gives a really good overview, but it's a quick overview of the nature of magic, de defining it, what's the difference in his, ver his view of high and low magic, um, the different tools that you would need, various traditions, uh, the folklore that goes back of quite a ways, give or take who you want to believe on the <laughs> how well those go. Uh, but it also goes as far as giving you the baselines of how to work with this energy within the cauldrons. Then you start off right off the bat. It's not like you're, we'll get to the exercises at the end of the book. It's like n you need to understand and experience this. So part two of this book is walking right into the first cauldron, which is the cauldron of warming. He goes through different ways to trigger this response, um, initiation, initiatory experiences, which are, and this is the one thing with when you work solitary, it's a little more complicated because when you are in a group and you're being initiated as a um, novice into a group there's a whole bunch of things that go on that can trigger these uh, visceral responses and help awaken these different energies when you're by yourself you have to be a lot more honest because there's no one there to catch you if you start letting your ego get in the way that's one thing that I will say to anyone who wants to start practicing on their own without a group or without a mentor if that's what you do you have to be very careful to keep your ego in check because your ego will inflate you to a point where you will crash and burn every single time. And that's where you see these uh, some of these people on TV sidetrack here. Um, I'm a witch. No, you're not. A genuine person who practices natural magic, which is what witchcraft and originally is, or any of the high ones, they don't brag about it. They're very quiet about it. And you can see in their demeanor that they have actually went through the process. They're not angry. Most of them aren't anyway. There's a few that do. But it depends on the situation. You'll notice the ones who are genuine in their practice and those who are totally their ego is in the way. Because if, once you get your ego in check, you don't feel that need to project yourself out there. And yes, that's someone who's saying it from <laughs> video streams. But what I'm my purpose in this is I want to spread some of this other information and it's out there in various points I just kind of want to give my twist on it so um, so it's that initiation part he goes through different ways as a solo person you can trigger this um, experience then he gives a very very powerful one I say powerful because I actually have performed most of the stuff that he's talked about in here um, he has a very specific technique to trigger the visceral experience um, and it's how do I say this it is an exceptionally intense uh, response when you wake up the first cauldron uh, 
Um, let me see if I can find the right page. I should have marked this out before I started. Sorry. Um, because it's you don't do it through a meditation, so to speak. This the first um, cauldron is in your lower abdomen, uh, a rate around the area of the sacral chakra. Um, and so there's ways to do it, like Dark Knight of the Soul. That's a good one to trigger that awakening. Um, going through a tower moment, which is exceptionally uncomfortable, but it's another one, especially the first big ones that wake you up to the reality of things. Those are ones that will wake up this um, lower cauldron. Um, if you ever encounter the fairies, visit sacred sites. Those are all really good ways to trigger it as well. Uh, he has an exercise in here, and I am drawn a blank as to where it is. Maybe it's in the back. Anyway, um, but he goes through this process of waking this lower cauldron up. When you wake it up, the first thing you'll notice is you'll break into a sweat. And I do not mean that mildly. When I did this first one, I was like, oh, it can't be. I've already been through enough to know what to kind of expect. And this particular process that he brings forward is not like something I've experienced before and it did have a different response to it because you're not just working with energy you're actually waking up the fire within uh, and it's not the same as kundalini that's the part that I was expecting it to be like it's not uh, <laughs> so just be prepared for that but from the first one which is like I said your lower abdomen area you work up to your second one which is the cauldron of movement which sits um, just below you where your heart chakra would be and I mean just below like half an inch or so is where it, you can feel it it goes through the ways of getting that one woke up that one like the first one is more of you can get it through life experience and it can sometimes wake up spontaneously the second one is a bit more intensive because this is where you start to really trigger off your emotions that's why if you do decide to pick up this book and go through it it's not going to be as simple oh f rainbows and butterflies and you know unicorn farts it's more like okay we're going to start this and then we're going to have to wade through the muck and the mire because that's what you do that's what the spiritual journey is all about and he does not hide that fact he actually points it out because it's like uh, visceral triggers agony ecstasy uh, vision quests emotionally and emotions and fulfilling your potential this is where you peel back the layers of your ego and if you haven't already worked through a lot of that you're gonna do a lot of it when you start to wake up the second um, cauldron just from the people that I know who've done stuff like this if your ego is still in full dominance in your life the second uh, cauldron it, it the, is a very low likelihood of it actually triggering because your ego cannot be the one in control you're waking up <laughs> some pretty interesting energies around your system and within your mind and body so you can't have the ego running rampant because that person was mean to me today no <laughs> no <laughs> so you start to work through a lot of that uh, he talks about like nightmares of Lilith working around the magician's madness or the shaman's madness because to activate you kind of have to go through a period of purging everything out of your system it's not comfortable it's not pleasant it's necessary because when you clean all of that nonsense out the world becomes an entirely different place usually better but you also can't be lied to as easy and you don't have this urge to lie you become a very powerful truth teller when you go through some of these processes um, and that's good and bad a lot of it is frustrating because people will come and be like I have a question and your next response is when they ask you the question well you did this 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 fix yourself you're not gonna give them an answer other than this is your problem you deal with it and that's what really when you start to delve into who you are as a person and you start to bust through some of these barriers the illusion of white lies melts because it's just not something you're comfortable with doing anymore because it's not being honest and it's not being truthful uh, then from there you work into the upper ca cauldron which is the cauldron of wisdom and that one sits uh, right underneath or right attached to 
the third eye and it works into the crown so it's a very <laughs> high energy that one is where we get into where you almost need to have someone with you it's not advisable to do this one solo and I'm not going to go into all of what it takes but these are dealing with very ancient rites we're talking about working with very high angelic or spiritual frequencies and energies we're not talking about oh I heard a noise or I get an impression this is where you start being one-on-one -on -one with these entities and these beings so this is not something you want to just go trawl along into am I saying this is a something not to try no the first two I would recommend to most people the third not for everybody and it's just because of what has to happen and this is where you have to make sure that you are working with high frequency energies not low frequencies you have to make sure you're dealing with like the angelic hosts and not the demonic forces this part here can get really tricky it he and he talks about it with like sham, shamanic possession being mounted like they talk about in Vudan and voodoo um, different ways to deal with something if it does happen to come up and it's not <laughs> what you wanted um, but then he goes through different techniques to trigger that highest aspect which again for everybody probably not that level but the first two are really good to get you a good foundation in your spiritual practice when you go through this you'll start to notice that when you speak something into existence so to, and I mean that in a literal sense your ability to manifest actually becomes easier things become a bit more spontaneous where you light a candle and pray for somebody and things can actually move a lot faster the reason is when you start to wake up these lower energies and he talks about this in this book that you actually will start to clear out the blockages but that's where you have to be really super honest with yourself and that's the reason like I say it's the initiation experiences that we used to have growing up there's rites of passage for men and for women boy to man girl to woman there were specific things and it may not have been like a fully ritualized event but there were processes that matured people into these other states when you go through a religious order whether it's through seminary whether it was through um, processes through the churches like the Catholic Church there's a quite a line of them or if it was through a coven of initiation and growth there were practices that you had to be able to process before you could learn the next secret what he talks about in his book which I appreciate is how a lot of that stuff can be applied from a small group uh, down to the individual but he also gives the heads up the, some of this stuff is really super powerful and it can change your life in a way you may not be ready for if you're and if you're not ready to take those steps you don't go all the way you go the first level or the second you don't have to go to the third unless you're in a good space to do so um, the other part that he talks about and this is a warning I give too when you get past the second cauldron and you really start to work with that level people around you are going to notice really quick that something's different they can't put their finger on it but if you go to the point where the th you worked with the third cauldron there may be a period of time where people think you've lost your dang mind because you are dealing with things that are not what the everyday person can want to work with uh, that's not like I said it can be really bad or it can be really good it's all in the person but when if you've ever looked up the shamanic madness or you look at the madness of the magician they go through a period before everything really sets down and wakes up for them where they are walking between multiple worlds and I mean that in a literal sense it's not like figurative like when you cast a circle you're walking between worlds because you're bringing the divine into your bubble and you're doing your thing which is great what he's talking about is your mind is literally being fractured at that point so <laughs> it's not pleasant uh, and it does trigger a lot of interesting responses to people so that's the reason that the third cauldron is not for everybody he talks about it he goes through some exercises that can wake it up if you go through it but it's definitely you start with the lower one and he talks about it as being this massive cauldron that fits your hip bones like it's big it for energy 
then you work up to your heart one which is about the size of a grapefruit when you get up to this one it's like the size of a lemon or a large lime because you have to get the foundation and that foundation is what supports and heats the rest of them so but the other part about it is if you work through the first two over time the third one will start to open uh, wake up on its own so it doesn't have to be processed that's the reason it's better to let the process occur naturally once you get the first two woke up but it's it's an interesting experience and when you do go through the first one especially you notice things differently not good not bad you just notice them differently uh, and as you continue to work with that lower uh, cauldron you start to become a bit more aware of how you show up in the world and that's where I always go back to personal accountability because it shows you that your words your actions your deeds even the things you think and never say affect the world around you in ways that you didn't realize before because we all have these abilities it's just to what level we control them <laughs> or how much our ego is in the way so if you're interested in an interesting way to build on your spiritual practice visceral magic bridging the gap between the mundane and magic is a good option to start with or continue uh, even if you've been practicing stuff for 20 years check it out because you might learn a couple of things or at least maybe wake up something you didn't realize you were missing because that's what I found when I did this one and like I said I've had this book for a, uh, seven eight years it's still I'll go back to it every so often and go through some of the exercises just to kind of remind myself of what is there and what is available if I want to use it so with that I will let you guys go if you're new here hit that subscribe button drop a like on the video um, and comment below if you've ever read this book by Peter Patton uh, if you have worked with the cauldron energy like that before um, just kind of hear your thoughts and feelings about it so we will talk to you later